Mars and Libra. Mars and Libra always astounds me. <laughs> because they're always changing. They always have two sides. There's always another element in the mix. Like every astrological placement, it has challenges and it has beautiful, beautiful contributions to the world. And traditionally, this is an astrologically difficult energy, and I'll talk specifically why. But to have Mars and Libra is said to be very challenging. But again, just like with any of the challenging energies, it absolutely has something of real value to give to the world that only Mars and Libra individuals can. Two sides. Do we begin with positive or the challenge? I think we should do challenges to get out of the way. I know Mars and Libra isn't too keen on criticism, but this is very important. There are so many beautiful... I'll preface it with a good thing. There are so many beautiful parts to this energy. You guys are the ultimate mediators. You know how to get people working together, to be very harmonious, and to know how to get communication and just energies flowing between people. And I'll elaborate on the good stuff later. The, but there's a big challenge for Mars and Libra. It's very, very challenging. Mars is the energy of passion. It's the, I'm sorry, it's the planet of passion. It's the planet of aggression, assertion. Um, yeah, and, and Libra is the sign of compromise, of balance, of harmony. So to have Mars and Libra means it can be very, very challenging to assert yourself, to speak plainly, directly, bluntly, because there's always that need for harmony, there's always that need for charm. You know, sometimes communication isn't the most charming, it has to be blunt and direct, and it's not the most beautiful. Mars and Libra really loves to conversate about just all sorts of different topics and really like jump from one thing to the next, but really serious topics or really like emotional topics, really ugly topics don't really appeal to this energy and it's uh, the challenge is to rise above sweeping it all under the rug, to rise above harmony at all costs. We must have harmony at all costs. That's a very detrimental way for this energy to express itself. It's very important to not try and charm all the time and to not try and avoid direct confrontation all the time. It can be all too easy with this energy to be very, 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 very passive-aggressive. And that doesn't help anyone, you know? With Mars and Libra, you know that communication is key to getting people to understand each other. Sometimes that communication has to be blunt, and it has to get to the point, and it has to be firm. And it can't just be, like... I, I have a problem, but charm, 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 you know, it, it's very crucial that when something angers you, when something makes you mad or something, you don't quite like something, to know when to charm, because charm is a beautiful thing, and you guys are excellent at it, so, you know, some of the times, maybe a lot of the times, charm is good, it helps to keep things flowing and harmonious, but sometimes you gotta be like, okay, this is bullshit, <laughs> you know, call things out for what they are, don't try and dress them up and be pretty, and don't try and you know, not talk about it in the first place. There are serious things that must be confronted, that must be faced, and they continually arise in life, you know? So it's very important to not try and weasel anything out of a situation. Sometimes it's very crucial to stand up. And again, for Mars and Libra, especially when you feel insulted or you feel like somebody's not treating you fairly, um... You know, you gotta call it out for what it is, and you have to stand up for yourself. It's not your job to sacrifice yourself for harmony. You know, if somebody hurts your feelings, or if somebody is very cruel to you, then you have that right to say something. And again, you don't need to be ridiculously, like, hostile, or, you know, I mean, you don't have to be confrontational in that way, but confronting in the sense of speaking about it plainly, openly. Dude, you hurt my feelings. I was really messed up what you said or what you did. Why'd you do it, you know? Or I would appreciate an apology and, like, making sure it doesn't happen again. That can be very hard. Everything that just happened, that can be very hard for Mars and Libra to 
channel to express. But it's absolutely crucial that you do, because just like every single person, you have the right to stand up for yourself. And you need to stand up for yourself at certain points, and you need to not let people walk all over you, and not let your need to be liked, your need for harmony at all costs. That Sometimes that needs to go away, and you need to be blunt and stand up for what's happening. Um, that's a that's a big challenge slash reward for this energy. Is once you rise above the challenge of needing to be liked all the time. So what alone the need for harmony all the time, which again is not healthy. Conflict happens. We gotta face it. We gotta work with it. You know. Um, gotta resolve it. But what alone that, but also the need to be liked. You know, hence where also the charm comes all the time. You guys, this is amazing, prodigious charm. Um, you gotta let go of that need to be liked all the time too, for sure, I find, with this energy, to embrace the ability, the ultimate potential, the beautiful power of Mars and Libra, which is being that Mars is the planet of action, of passion, being passionate about social causes, about social justice, about fairness, about making the world just a better place, you know, on a macrocosmic scale and a microcosmic scale. You know, if you're really going to be the the spiritual warrior, the charming, effective, people-oriented warrior, the people organizer, if you will, that Mars and Libra can be, you got to stop worrying if people, if what you're saying is tipping the apple cart, you know, is going to upset somebody or is going to make somebody not like you. Those things are not bad things to think about. But to be obsessed about it and to sacrifice what you need to do for this apparent need to be liked, which is really just a want to be liked. We don't need to be liked by other people because ultimately what are we... We just need to love ourselves, you know? We don't need to justify self-love through love of other people. We just need to love ourselves and stand up for who we are. And the ultimate potential, once you get past all of this need to be liked is this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spiritual warrior, a warrior for justice. You know, I've said it in several videos before, but Aries and Libra are partner signs, and Aries is known as the warrior, the pioneer, and Libra is much more the harmonious, the, you know, um, very much more pleasing, the Venusian element versus Martian. But dear God, fucking Libra is powerful, just as powerful as Aries are. They just have to understand what they're fighting for, what their cause is, you know, they have to recognize that justice is so much more important than what people think of them, and if people like them or not. So it's really crucial for this energy to be willing to stand up on your own two feet, and stand up for something, something that you really care about, and that you can really throw your energies into and, and champion. And once you do that, you're at the top level of Mars and Libra. And again, then you experience rewards that no other energy could possibly experience. And you contribute things that no other energy could possibly contribute. Not even the partner placement for, uh, like, Mars and Aries, which I have natally. Mars in the house of Aries. Slightly different, but pretty much the same thing. Um, you know, Mars and Aries and Mars and Libra. When Mars and Libra are, are operating at their fullest, it's incredible. And it's, in some ways, more powerful than even Mars and Aries, which is fucking powerful, <laughs> you know. <laughs> they're, just, they're just two sides of the same coin. They're just different. And again, once the challenge is overcome, beautiful contributions to the world. So, we talked about that. Um, we talked about the, little, the anger stuff. Um, justice, social welfare, sex. Sex, 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 sex. Mars and Libra is an air Mars, so it's very intellectual, you know, sexual energies, and this is also, by the way, um, influenced by your house position, so I check out your house position and, and take that into account, but Mars and Libra is very intellectual, they like to conversate and like to let the mind into the bedroom, understanding and trying out new things and weighing, like, well, this position is good, but let's try this position, or this approach is good, let's try this approach. This is one of the bisexual placements. To have Mars and Libra, um, I've found in so many charts of people who are most most often bi, but sometimes gay, too, but most often bi, I find. Um, it makes sense, you know, Libra, two sides, which is really fascinating. But, um, 
yeah, trying out, hey, well, what if we have another partner, male, female, whatever. Mars and Libra, just like the other Air Mars and just like the Fire Mars, are very interested in trying out new things always and exploring, adventuring. And especially with Mars and Libra, to have a new idea and then try it out, you know. That's where a, a very fiery partner comes in. That's where an Aries comes in, for example, with Mars and Libra specifically. Mars and Aries, all the better. Awesome. Libra rules the kidney, and I don't remember which vertebrae, but it's a couple of the lower back vertebrae. Um, this is an interesting <laughs> Martian energy to incorporate into, like, into physical touch. Um, hmm. Interesting. I would love to get your perspective on this, by the way. What parts of your body are most sensitive to touch are most erotic and whatnot, but my astrological imaginings point me towards, just like with Virgo, which rules the intestine, as well as a couple of Geminian parts, um, you know, a gentle stomach massage would be very effective. Um, I don't know how sexual it would be, but I'd imagine it would work out quite well, because it's Mars and Libra. Um, so, I, this is, yeah, my educated guess is a nice, like, you know, kind of like acupuncture, pinpointing certain parts of uh, the internal organs very gently, yet very firmly, to um, to just relax and to get marsh energies flowing, you know? Um, I know you can also access the kidney from the back. I think it's right under those thick, like, pockets of fat, right above the hip, I want to say. I don't know, I'm just feeling up my kidneys here, trying to... Is that my kidney? I don't know. But, <laughs> but that's what I would imagine would be very nice. And again, also lower back, lower vertebrae would be very effective. But, you know, it is a, a, an air Martian sign. So, I mean, we all have bodies. We all love physical touch. We all crave, we all need physical touch. Um, so that, I mean, that would all be good. But because it's an air Mars sign, the mind is much more the playground, much more the laboratory, you know, for sex. And is much more, I think, useful when it comes to this energy to peak interests and to get those energies flowing, you know. Or maybe both, I don't know. Maybe discuss a really hot sexual idea <laughs> while, while slightly, you know, poking the kidneys. <laughs> Maybe that would work. I don't know. Again, you tell me. I, I don't know. I'm not Mars and Libra. Um, but I do know for sure that conversating, awesome. Um, ideas. It's, you know, it's not even so much... I mean, sexual ideas, definitely. But it's more conversating. More the wit. The sexual innuendo. The gentle words combined with a gentle crest. That would really get Mars and Libra going. Involving fashion, too, since it's Libra, since it's air, visual. So, lingerie, fantastic. Um, you know, air is very idealistic, so keeping it... Whereas a Mars and Taurus would be more, more about Earth and naturalness, Mars and Libra kind of likes to get frilly and likes to get lacy, and, and they like to add beauty into the mix. And Taurus, too, but in a very much more Earth way. Libra being air is going to be very much more visual and very much more... But something new, something interesting, you know, the human body changes very, very sh slowly, you know, and so what an interest to Mars and Libra, like, say, changing lingerie all the time, like satin this time and silk this time and lace and garters, yada, 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 yada. I mean, just basically making sex a fashion show, I think, would be incredibly pleasing for Mars and Libra, and also including candles and more ambiance. Again, the more smells and the sensual intoxication stuff, that's more Mars and Taurus, but Mars and Libra would love to have a pleasant, beautiful, harmonious atmosphere, and of course candles, beautiful, beautiful lighting, beautiful, uh, really setting up the scene, you know, but it should be said too, it's, it's an air Mars, so it's not fascinated, it's not obsessed with getting every little detail right, it's, it likes to keep things fun, adventurous, you know, ever-changing, and so... The setting up the scene is all very well and good, but sometimes 
a random romp around the room, around the living room would be excellent. You know, again, it's it's Air Mars, so it's going to be fucking unpredictable. It's going to be flowing everywhere, and random ideas are going to come up, and I think it's very crucial, a very flexible partner with this energy, because for one, you're going to change your mind all the time, in general, in general, but especially when it comes to sex, you'll be like, oh, let's try this now, oh, let's try this, and you know, you try out an idea for a couple seconds, and you're like, okay, on to the next one, you know. That's something else that should be said. Uh, I can't really think of anything else sexually about this sign. If I do, I will say something. But changing your mind and making decisions is very hard for Mars and Libra because, again, you want to make sure everything is harmonious, and that's a very good thing. You know, again, for the challenges that I mentioned before, it's beautiful how Mars and Libra is able to subjugate their own ego, your guys' own ego, to satisfy the needs of what's happening at that time. And so you are the most considerate people when it comes to making sure everybody's having a good time and able to enjoy themselves. Again, the trick is to not lose yourself all the time in the whims and the and what other people want. And again, sometimes you gotta be firm and Make a choice. At some point, you got to make a choice, you know, with certain stuff. Give yourself all the time that you need to make that educated choice. But ultimately, it's very important for Mars and Libra, again, to stand firm when they need to, to make choices when they need to, to risk being the unpopular one. Dude, people's opinions, and you'll know this more than most, change all the time from day to day, let alone year to year, let alone decade to decade, generation to generation, century, you know what I mean? So who cares what people think when it comes to certain things? If people are being judgmental or they don't get where you're coming from or, you know, they are going to not necessarily like the choice that you made. At some point, you got to just be yourself and you got to stand up and live your life. No matter what other people think. It's great to mediate and it's great to be harmonious, but not at the cost of yourself. Never at the cost of yourself. And again, I can't say this enough, passive aggressiveness is something to work on with this energy, to be direct and blunt and not, you know, hints and, and air energy, air energy is said to be swords in tarot, and it can very much be cutting, you know, and with Mars and Libra it can get very passive aggressive and nick, 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 you know, just like little cut here, little cut there, and that's so unhealthy because it's not getting your anger out directly and the other person possibly doesn't know why you're angry in the first place, you know? It's very, very, very crucial to fight against passive aggressiveness in your life and to be direct. I've said it a lot, but I really can't say it enough. Again, though, you guys are incredibly charming, and anything that you turn your prodigious wit and charm to, you'll succeed in. So acting, excellent, um, working with people, social work, uh, justice, um, you know, writing about social issues, communicating about social issues, um, extremely important. Ex communicating about art, you know, and beauty and fashion, beautiful. And I, one last thing that comes to mind is you guys work really well with other people, with groups, you know. And um, having a partner really can help you reach new plateaus, and, or rather, new heights. And um, even though it's important to be strong as an individual, absolutely, for you guys especially, I would say, it's very important that you work with other people, that you have a, a core group of people that you can really trust and really add your skills to unabashedly because you know how to compliment somebody perfectly and again don't lose yourself in it you know don't lose yourself in it but your energies absolutely function best when working with another person they can function beautifully on your own absolutely but with this energy some kind of group work some kind of working with people even if you're working on your own and then you work with other people in the results phase or whatever, very beneficial. You charming fucker, you. 
Um, I can't really think of anything else, so if I do, I will say something. Namaste.